Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, just to recap on what we did uh, earlier in part one of this this uh, series of videos, we created a uh, web application or an ASP.NET application uh, where we've uh, downloaded the database and into this web form. And when you click this button, this list all recipes, then a set of recipes will appear in the list box. All right. So what we want to do next is to, as we select any one of these items, we want the label down here to update with the various uh, values of that particular recipe. All right, so let's do that. All right, uh, so I'm just gonna, so in other words, go back to the uh, design. So what I want to do is basically uh, create an event whenever an item is selected inside the list box. Now, one of the differences between a Windows form and a web form is that since you are running inside a browser, remember, yeah, your app is running inside a browser, uh, the, the browser is actually sitting on the client's page, on the client's computer. Now, the server that is serving these pages might be sitting, you know, thousands of miles away, thousands of kilometers away. So there are some additional differences between uh, Windows Form and Web Form, one of which is this. So if you select the list box and you click this uh, um, arrow on the top right hand corner, you have this thing called Enable Auto, po Auto Post Back. And if you look at the comment below it, it says, it says forces the control to post back each time an, an item is selected. Now, uh, since this is what we call a client server architecture, meaning the client is running on a browser somewhere in the world and the server could be somewhere else in the world. So uh, right now, since this is not ticked, what it means is if a user selects any item in this list, uh, basically nothing will happen because it will, just, it will just highlight the one that is selected in the browser. It will not talk to the server in the background. So if you want it to capture that event, that change of item selected, then you have to enable auto postback. So what that will do is that next time a user selects any one of the items, the web page will send a message to the server, and the server will then send back a whole new page for the browser to show. All right. So that's what we're going to do for this uh, simple example. So now once we've enabled that, yeah, once we've enabled auto postback, so I, I will double click it. Uh, sorry, I'll double click it and so now I get to the selected index changed uh, event uh, just like in the Windows form. Alright, so in the I'm just going to copy the code from the earlier project and pasting it here. Alright, so you'll notice that there's a, an error here. Uh, we'll come to that in a bit. So let's, let's have a look at the code. All right, so the first thing is we're supposed to get whatever was selected by the user. All right, and then we had to do this this fancy partitioning thing, if you uh, remember from the last video, because our data, yeah, if you remember from the from the app, remember our data is actually uh, consists of like several parts you have the name of the recipe and then the space hyphen space and then you have the uh the energy all right number at the back so whenever you select something you're actually getting this whole thing but what we want for our sql statement is we just want the front part we just want the for example here we just want the me goreng. we don't want the space hyphen dash 100 all right so uh, just go back to the previous video for 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 an explanation of what of what these two lines uh, do in order to extract just the recipe name. All right. Okay. Then after getting the recipe name, we issue an SQL statement here using a parameterized uh, approach to uh, substituting values into the the where clause. Yeah, by using SQL command parameters .add with value. All right. Uh, okay, so uh, hopefully you guys recall that this is meant to avoid the SQL injection attack. And then, uh, as per usual, you have the, the the SQL data adapter. You must have a data set. You must fill the adapt. Uh, you must fill the data set 
via the adapter, all right, and then from the data set, you get the table and put inside a variable here called DT, which is of type data table, all right, and then basically go through each item, uh, sorry, basically getting that, that, that record and then either showing an error message if that record is not found or displaying or updating the labels that we've had, uh, we've designed earlier. So there's a few things we need to change here, obviously one of which is, is message box, all right? And the other thing is, is uh, let me come back to this, this is an error. Now, in uh, web form, you have to add a dot text at the back, all right? Uh, so then that will solve that little problem, just add a dot text, so select the name dot text, that will solve it. Another way is uh, just recipe list box, and then dot text that will also solve it. All right, I'm just trying to keep it as identical as possible to the Windows Form version. So I'm going to do this. Now, next problem we have is this this part about not being able to find that particular recipe. That means the SQL code that we've issued here returned zero results. So dt dot rows dot count uh, isn't one. Is not one. So we want to show this this error message. But as I've said before, we, we, we don't want to use message box. There's a lot of mess with message box uh, in a, a web form. So we need to show this error yeah, uh, somewhere else. So what I want to do is I want to show this error in the same place that I showed the no recipes found. All right. So remember, if you, if you recall, this is called an error label. All right. So let me just go back to here and, and change this to error label dot text is equal to this. All right, so all of this and get rid of the, the message box stuff at the back. All right, uh, so we also have to make it visible, of course. All right, dot visible is equal to true. And so if we make it visible when there's an error, we should make it not visible when there's no error. All right, so this is when it's no error, then I hide it. Now, because we've changed the text here, so we also need to update uh, the earlier error, yeah? So here we can't just say visible. So here, this is the uh, the list all button event, a uh, click event. So error label, error label dot text is equal to no recipes found. All right, so that's the error message you want to show on the label. All right. So I think that's about it. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, maybe I'll demo one first without this uh, item being enabled. All right. So let me do that first. Let me just run this. All right. So this is the my Chrome browser. So list, and then when I click, as you can see, nothing happens, all right? So if I close this, uh, come back to this uh, list box, and now enable auto post back, and then run it. All right, so list all recipes. Now I click any one of them. If you notice, the whole page will refresh. And the values down there are now changed to the correct information. All right. All right. So that's basically how um, you know how to use certain components on an ASP.NET. This this particular project just mirrors the one I did earlier on the Windows form. All right. Stay tuned for more videos uh, when I talk a little bit more about ASP.NET in terms of some special controls and some requests that you guys uh, uh, had put in. Uh, so stay tuned. Thanks.